Hello and welcome to another Big Orbit Games unboxing video. I'm Chris and today I'll be looking at Rivals of Ixalan Booster Box. So, Rivals, second uh, set of the block, the Ixalan block. Lots of dinosaurs, lots of pirates, vampires, merfolk, all supported again in this set. Um, so, it's been a fun set so far. Uh, Pre-release was last weekend, and uh, it was a lot of fun. So, it's going to get cracking. 36 boosters. Uh, we'll go through the commons and uncommons a little bit to begin with, and then uh, start skipping them once we start seeing uh, once we start seeing duplicates again. So, sanguine glorifier, uh, moment of craving. It's actually. Pretty good in limited. Uh, overgrown Armsaw, Stampeding Horncrest, lots of dinosaurs and pirates so far. Uh, Kite Sail Corsair, such a good card. Uh, Evolving Wilds, lovely artwork on that. Uh, Sun Coloured Raptor, Sea Legs, Jade Bearer, uh, Crashing Tide, and onto the Uncommons, got Crested Herd Caller, Mausoleum Harpy, Dead Eye Brawler, this is a Quite a fun card, actually. And, uh, ooh, Tetsamok, Primal Death. Nice. So, one of the legendary dinosaurs. Just gonna put these in uh, piles. So, six cost uh, with Death Touch and has the cool ability of being able to put prey counters on, uh, on your opponent's stuff and then when he enters, just kill everything with a prey counter on it. Um, so, obviously, you're telegraphing what you're doing. So, people. Like your opponent can prepare for it, but you know it's still a pretty good card. So nice rare to to get us off the bat. Uh, planes and treasure token. His treasures are very much back in the set. Not a bad pack one. Let's hope the luck continues. Fathomfleet border plummet. It's back again, and it needed to be back to be honest. There's so many flyers in this set. Uh, Fanatical Firebrand, Water Knot, Divine Verdict, Impale, also back. Uh, Knight of the Stampede, Traveler's Amulet, uh, Spawn Guardian, and Hardy Veteran. Then we got Raging Regisaur, another cool dino. Um, lots of uh, stuff like dealing incremental damage uh, in this set as well, whether it's to your own stuff or your opponent's stuff. Uh, Blazing Hope, Needle Tooth Raptor, Ooh, and Hadana's Climb, so Legendary Enchantment. Um, it's a flip card as well. So at the beginning of combat on your turn, put plus one plus one counter on target creature you control, then if that creature has three or more plus one plus one counters on it, transform it, and it transforms into a legendary land, the Winged Temple of Racha. Um, you can tap it to add anything to your mana pool, or pay three and tap it. Target creature you control gains into flying and gets plus X plus X until end of turn where X is its power. So I pay three and tap it to double something's power and give it flying. Uh, pretty solid card. And uh, it's in Merfolk colours. So um may see it in the Merfolk deck. Flying Merfolk. Useful. Uh, there's the flip card. Uh, placeholder, that's the one. which are always useful if you have uh, slightly see-through <laughs> sleeves. Uh, another Overgrown Armour Saw, uh, River Data, Exultant Sky Marcher, Recover, Aracha Feralback, Sailor of Means, which is a reprint from Ixalan, weirdly. Um, there's one in each colour, there may be more, uh, I don't actually remember, but there's definitely one, one reprint from Ixalan in each colour. Uh, Sailor of Means is pretty solid and limited, so that's probably why they put it in. Uh, Grasping Scoundrel, another Traveler's Amulet, Swaggering Corsair, and Crested Herdcaller, Blazing Hope, another Deadeye Brawler, and a Sphinx's Decree. So, one white and one for a sorcery. Each opponent can't cast instant sorcery spells during that player's next turn. Yeah, I mean, blue white control, why not? Ooh, and uh, 
also the city's blessing. I actually really like this card. Uh, it's not really a card, it's not really an emblem, it's not really anything, it's just uh, a reminder. So, but really nice artwork on it, and uh, the city's blessing does play a big role in this set and some of the mechanics. So there are some uh, cards that have Ascend on them. Uh, Dead Eye uh, Recaller, Luminous Bonds, Dust Charger, and here's one with Ascend. So Dust Charger is a 4 mana 3-3 three, three with Ascend. So if you have the Seize Blessing, um, so if you control 10 or more permanents at any stage during the game, you gain the Seize Blessing. Um, and then from then on, you always have the Seize Blessing, and this will always have plus 2, plus 2. So 4 mana 5-5. Five, five. Pretty good as long as it's late game. Uh, Gilgrove Stalker, Buccaneer's Bravado, uh, Dark Inquiry, Aracha Relic, Cleansing Ray. Don't know what Ray's done to deserve that, but uh, Brazing Freerooter, and Stormfleet Swashbuckler. Um, another Ascend card, and this gains Double Strike if you have uh, the Seas Blessing. So, fairly good early game. It's just a bear that has the pirate tag. And uh, late game, it's a 2-2 with double strike, which is sometimes relevant. Late game. Uh, Expel from Rancher. And Sadistic Sky Marcher. And then we have Path to, of Discovery. Um, that's the rare, so whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, it explores. A um, little slow, 4 mana, but I do like this card. Um, for some reason, we I must have missed a flip card. That was the flip card. They normally only put those in packs that have flip cards in them. Huh, weird. Because Path of Discovery definitely isn't a flip card. Very strange. Uh, another Exalted Sky Marcher, Dinosaur Hunter. For all those giant dinos out there, you can just kill them with this. Colossal Dreadmoor. Uh, that's the other reprint. Um, the flavour text on this is kind of funny, so the old one is like, oh my god, it's eating me. Um, and this one is like, remember when it was the most terrifying thing you'd ever seen? Because um, now there's a lot bigger things. So the, we're already getting a lot of doubles of the commons. Uh, Gleaming Barrier. And another Cleansing Ray. Uh, Sky March Aspirant. Flood of Recollection. Golden Demise. And Induced Amnesia. So a three mana enchantment when induced amnesia enters the battlefield. Target player exiles all cards from his or her hand face down, then draws that many cards. When it's put into a graveyard from the battlefield, return the exiled cards to their owner's hands. So get a new hand, get your old hand back when it leaves. Not bad. And Murpho tokens, which we will need a lot of if you're playing the Murpho deck, because there's a lot of stuff this, this time around that generates the 1-1 uh, one -one hexproof. So, Secrets of the Golden City, Mountain of Dusk, another Fathom Fleet Border, Plummet, Fanatical Firebrand, Water Knot, Jaycraft Artisan, Strider Harness, Vampire Revenant, Shatter, and Oathsworn Vampire, Forsaken Sanctuary. These are actually really useful to have in Limited, uh, having these in the packs. Uh, Curious Obsession and Kamina's Awakening. So, four mana, including two blue, enchantment, and has. Ascend on it. So at the beginning of your upkeep, each player draws a card. If you have the City's Blessing, instead only you draw a card. So good early game to get you fuel to get the 10 permanents, and then late game, only you're the one drawing. So quite nice. Canal Monitor, Aggressive Urge, Bombard, Water Knot, Voracious Vampire, Swan Guardian, actual, yeah, Sea Legs, uh, Everdawn Champion, Forerunner of the Herald. I love the Forerunners actually. Um, I think three out of the four are really good. Um, it's basically a tutor for a tribe. So the Murfolk one is pretty good, so four mana, three, two. Um, but you get to tutor for a merfolk, put it on top of your library. Whenever a merfolk enters the battlefield in your control, put a plus one, plus one counter on Forerunner of the Heralds. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is just a solid card. Uh, the, the four drop slot in the merfolk deck is currently a little kind of 
well, there's a lot of four drops, put it that way. Um, you might not be able to find space for it, but it's a pretty good card. Uh, Raging Regisaur and Direfleet Daredevil, nice. Um, so this is, well, people have been raving about this card. Um, honestly, I kind of feel it's a sideboard card. Um, there's no guarantee that your opponent's going to be playing relevant spells, um, or not just relevant, but something that's not, that's actually going to give you a benefit. Uh, so it's a 2-1 first strike uh, for 2, which is already good. Um, and when it enters the battlefield, exile target instant or sorcery card from an opponent's graveyard. You may cast that card this turn, and you can spend mana as though any um, type to cast that spell. Uh, if the card put into a graveyard this turn, exile it instead. Um, I mean, I guess you're always exiling their card, whether you cast it or not, so um, stuff with flashback or, I don't know, if you want to get rid of something in modern so that the, your opponent's Tarmogoyf has one less power and toughness, who knows. Um, but yeah, it's alright. Uh, naturalize, Mutiny, Negate, uh, Raptor Companion, Dust Legion Zealot, Overgrown Armor Saw, Squire's Devotion, Vampire Revenant, Aratra Relic, Shatter, and Sadistic Sky Marcher, Merfolk Mistbinder, um, this is really, really, really good Merfolk card, uh, Famished Paladin, um, and Huatli, nice. Our first Mythic. So Huatli, um, she's back and uh, slightly better uh, than the previous incarnation. So she's changed colors as well. Uh, she's now green-white. Uh, so it's four mana for a three loyalty planeswalker, but her plus one gets her a lot of loyalty if you have a decent board. So uh, plus one is put a loyalty counter on Huatli for each creature you control. So the idea is to go wide and uh, get lots of creatures put a bunch of loyalty on her, her minus one, target creature gets plus x plus x until the end of the turn where x is the number of creatures you control. Um, probably the least good um, ability here. And minus eight, you get an emblem with whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may draw a card, which is pretty good. She didn't necessarily protect herself though, but um, I mean, if you can you know, cast her and then plus one her and get, I don't know, like three or four loyalty. That might actually put her out of range of, um, of your opponent's ability to kill her. So it's pretty good. Divine Verdict, Impale, Naturalize, Mutiny, Negate. Lots of reprints in that pack. Uh, Spire Winder, Hunt the Weak, Grasping Scoundrel, a Gleaming Barrier, Voracious Vampire. Uh, Forerunner of the Empire. So, four mana, one three, and you tutor for a dinosaur. And whenever a dinosaur enters the battlefield under your control, you may have Forerunner of the Empire deal one damage to each creature. Um, great for triggering in rage. So you play a dinosaur within rage, it gets dealt one damage, and it's in rage triggers. So, yeah, pretty nice. Uh, Forerunner of the Legion, this is a Forerunner pack. Uh, three mana, two two, a vampire knight, and when it enters the battlefield, you may search for a vampire and put it on top of your library. Whenever another vampire enters the battlefield under your control, a target creature gets plus one plus one until the end of turn. Uh, it's probably the least good second ability, but just the fact that there's a two two for three that has that shoots for a vampire, um, it's definitely going to be good in uh, commander. Riverwise Augur and Silent. Gravestone, so one mana artifact, cards and graveyards can't be the targets of spells or abilities. Uh, exile, silent graveyard, and all cards from all graveyards and draw a card. Um, gravestone, I. <laughs> silent, did I say silent gravestone? I don't even remember anymore. I've just. Yeah. Sorry, it's early. Also, just as, as a random thing, the, the artwork on that looks amazing. And saplings are back. Uh, Jungleborn Pioneer. Aratra Raptor. Cut Corsair. Moment of Triumph. Dusk Legion Select. 
Jimcraft Artisan, Crushing Tide. I'm just skipping all of the commons from now on, I think, because I'm just saying the same ones over and over again. Uh, we've got Stone Quarry, Forerunner of the Empire again, uh, Siren Reaver, 3-2 um, Flyer for 3 potentially, if you attacked with a creature, and Galta Primal Hunger. So, 12 mana, 12-12. Twelve, twelve. But it costs X less to cast, where X is the total power of creatures you control, and it has trample. This was uh, there's a promo version of this from uh, Store Championships, so uh, quite a few people will already have this, uh, even before the set was released. Um, but it's, it's a nice, nice addition to the set. Um, it's definitely, it's definitely more of a commander card, <laughs> to be honest. Um, even with the the reduction in cost, it, it may still be too slow for this format. For standard, I mean. Um, I mean, I may be proven wrong. The dinosaurs just still seem like they can't like out-aggro the aggro decks. Um, misclicked Herald, Suncrested Pterodon. This was such an annoying card to play against in uh, in the pre-release. Evolving Wilds and Legion Conquistador is back again. Strength of the Pack, Charging Tuscadon, Jungle Creeper, and Crafty Cut Purse is our rare. So four mana, two two with Flash, and when it enters the battlefield, each token that would be created under an opponent's control this turn is created under your control instead. Um, Interesting sideboard tech card, um, I guess. It, it's not that good. <laughs> I mean, if you get it to work, amazing, but... Um, I suppose you can just bomb getting in a commander deck and assume that you're playing against someone that generates tokens. So yeah, just skipping through... And Pitiless Plunderer. Got Thrashing Brontodon, Charging Tuscanon again, and Dire Fleet Poisoner. Uh, this is an interesting card actually. So 2 mana 2-2 two, two with Flash and Death Touch. And when it enters the battlefield, target attacking pirate you control gets plus 1, plus 1, and Death Touch until end of turn. Um, yeah, awesome combat trick. Because you can just attack with your weenie pirate uh, into their large board or whatever. Um, if you get the damage in, great. If they block it, great. And yeah, you can always flash it in to, to block something as well. So, um, quite a cool card. So definitely skipping, skipping, skipping. Uh, Cherished Hatchling is a fun one. Um, the card that no one wants to kill, especially in Limited. Uh, so when it dies, you can cast Dinosaur Spells this turn, so they have Flash. Um, I actually don't think it's that good. 2 mana, 2, 1, and it gives your other Dinosaurs Flash. But you're also holding up the mana, potentially, to thinking that, oh, my opponent's going to block this thing, and they can just let the damage through, and then you've wasted your turn. So um, if you can, like, I don't know, Rile it on your turn, on your opponent's turn, and then flash in bigger stuff. Great, but I don't know. It, it's a weird one. Famish Paladin uh, at at, uh, at Zakan at Zakan. Difficult one to pronounce. Uh, Seer um, and Arch of Arancha is our rare, and we have a foil. Oh god, that's an awesome foil. Um, Arch of Arancha ascend. Uh, you can add colors to your mana pool and pay five to draw a card and activate only if you have City's Blessing. It's a good mana sink in Limited, I guess. Still probably wouldn't play it. And the foil, that is a lovely foil. Um, that looks so good. Zakama Primal Calamity. Uh, Naya Dinosaur. Uh, nine mana uh, legendary Elder Dinosaur with Vigilance, Reach and Trample. It definitely needs more keywords. When it enters the battlefield, if you cast it, untap all lands you control. Um, that that middle part of the, the the here, if you cast it, that's quite important. So no um, no funny business in commander. 
with like Dead Eye Navigator and things like that, bringing it back and untapping all your lands and yeah. Uh, but it's a, a 9 mana 9 9 with 3 abilities. So you can pay a red and 2 and it deals 3 damage to target creature. A green and 2, destroy target artifact or enchantment. And a white and 2, gain 3 life. Um, I, you can essentially pay 9 mana for it, get a 9 9, and then do all 3 abilities in the same turn. Because all your lands have untapped. So, I don't know. It, it's gonna go in a commander deck somewhere I don't think it's gonna see standard play because no one's gonna get to nine mana in standard too much ramming up and you're dead by turn four uh, Goblin Trailblazer oh the Goblin Trailblazer we haven't seen one of those yet and this is a really good card uh, in limited a two mana two one with, with menace I played a game and this guy did 17 damage. <laughs> After I buffed him a few times as well. Um, Kilgrave Stalker, kind of keys the door. And a Woodland Stream, Majestic Helioptorus. Yeah, another dinosaur gains flying when it attacks. Uh, Forerunner of the Coalition, the only Forerunner we haven't seen yet. Uh, and it's Possibly one of the, the better ones as well, so 3 mana 2-2, two, two. tutor a pirate to the top, uh, and when another pirate enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent loses one life. Uh, I don't think there's necessarily going to be lots of swarmy pirate lists, but um, certainly it, just the fact that you're tutoring for a pirate and a lot of the pirates you want to tutor for have really, really strong effects. Um, hostage, take, hostage Taker, for instance. Um, as just a random example. Just the ability to shoot at that is, is pretty good. Uh, and then Bishop of Binding is our rare. So when it enters the battlefield, um, exile target creature and opponent controls until Bishop of Binding leaves the battlefield. And when it attacks, target vampire gets plus X plus X until end of turn where X is the power of the exiled card. Uh, interesting mechanic on that one. And it's a four mana one one that exiles something. Um, and then you kind of want to attack with it, but you also don't want to attack with it because you don't want the exiled card to come back onto the field. But if you can give it some form of evasion, um, it's actually really good. Alright, so I'm literally just skipping the commons now. So Pirates of Pillage, Aquatic Incursion, uh, Stone Quarry, and Champion of Dusk, I like Champion of Dusk actually. I pulled one in pre-release and didn't get to play it because my vampires were, I had like three vampires in the entire pool. Um, so five mana, four, four, and when it enters the battlefield, you draw X cards and lose X life, where X is the number of vampires you control. Uh, it's just fuel. If you've got like a few vampires on the field, it includes itself obviously, so and if you draw three off this, that's insane value, so really good. Soul of the Rapids. Hornswoggle. Best named card in the set. Uh, Enter the Unknown. Itali Primal Storm. Did I manage to... I did. I managed to, to miss. An uncommon. Uh, Stormfleet Swashbuckler was the other uncommon. Uh, Itali Primal Storm. So whenever it attacks, exile the top card of each player's library. Then you may cast any number of non-land cards exiled this way without paying their mana cost. And it's already a 6 mana 6-6. Six, six. Um, if you can give it haste, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's insane. Um, again, like all of the legendary uh, dinosaurs, like the Elder Dinosaurs, they're, they're pretty much commander cards rather than standard. But then again, we said that about gods in Amon Ket and... Look at Hazaret. Um, so yeah, maybe maybe someone will come up with a, a good dinosaur list that uses the elder dinosaurs. Who knows? But I, it's a fun card. Horrible to play against. Uh, and a nice foily swamp. Very nice. Silvergill Adept. Excellent card. Again, there was uh, the promo version, which looks 
a lot better than this one, I think. Uh, the, the artwork on this is still really nice, but yeah. Uh, just two mana, two one, draw a card. Very good. Because you're always going to have a Merfolk in, in your hand if you're playing the Merfolk deck. Uh, if you don't, you're doing it wrong, obviously. Uh, Reaver Ambush and Nezahal, Primal Tide. So another Elder Dinosaur. Um, let's see if we can get the whole set from this one box. Um, 7 mana, 7-7, seven, seven. it can't be countered, you have no maximum hand size. Whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell, draw a card, discard 3 cards, and exile Nezahal, return it to the battlefield tapped under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. Um, yeah, again, commander card. <laughs> a good commander card, but a commander card. If you do like, 5 colour dinosaurs, um, That'd be uh, pretty funny. Golden Demise, Imperial Ceratops, Reckless Rage, and Temple Altasaur. So, 5 mana, 3, 4, Dinosaur. If a source would deal damage to another dinosaur you control, prevent all but one of that damage. Um, get two of these out, and your stuff can't die. Unless lots and lots of incremental damage, which is going to trigger all of your enrage effects, because obviously you're playing this in an enrage deck, why wouldn't you? Um, yeah, I mean, hard to, to actually pull off, but could be good. And a Foil Squire's Devotion. end. Uh, Legion Lieutenant. Very nice. Um, 2 mana 2-2 two, two, with uh, an excellent plus 1 plus 1 effect for vampires. Uh, same as the Merfolk dude. Very good card. Curious Obsession and Foul Orchard. Rekindling Phoenix. The first Phoenix with an actual Phoenix effect. Um, yeah, this is a really, really, really nice card. Uh, so 4 mana for 3 uh, with flying. When it uh, dies, create a zero one one elemental creature token with, at the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice this creature and return target card named Rekindling Phoenix from a graveyard to the battlefield. It gains haste until end of turn. So it's just a phoenix, that, like an actual phoenix. Like all of the other phoenixes, like shuffle back into your library. This stays on the battlefield um, to some degree and just comes back. So yeah, very nice. And uh, there's the elemental token to go with it. It's almost like they planned that one. Oh, look, you can play uh, Magic Minecraft. So, Shake the Foundations, Ravenous Chupacabra. This ugh, such a disgusting card is limited. Um, four mana, two, two, and kill something with no limit to what that thing is. Um, other than it can't be hexproof, obviously. It's just, it's so good. Resplendent Griffin and Silverclad Ferocidons. So we've got 7 mana, 8 to 5 within rage. When it's dealt damage, each opponent sacrifices a permanent. Um, totally a commander card. <laughs> I mean, nothing else you can really say about that. An 8 5 for 7. That makes people get rid of their own stuff. Has Commander written all over it. Arterial Flow, Daring Buccaneer, Pride of Conquerors, and an Awakened Amalgam. Uh, four mana, star star, and its power and toughness are equal to the number of differently named lands you control. Um, yeah, I mean, again, probably a Commander card. Uh, the best you could get in sort of standard is well, you could get it like 7 or 8 power and toughness uh, in the right deck, but when it comes out on 4 mana, it's generally going to be like a 3-3, three, three, which isn't bad, and it does grow, so uh, maybe a bit slow, but has potential. I 
didn't skip too far. So a Thrashing Brontodon, Stormfleet Sprinter, love this card. Um, three mana, two, two with haste and can't be blocked. Uh, Aquatic Incursion and Kumena, Tyrant of Aracha. Another mythic, so three mana, two, four, legendary Merfolk Shaman. Tap another untapped Merfolk you control and Kumena can't be blocked this turn. Tap three untapped Merfolk you control to draw a card and tap five to put a plus one plus one counter on each Merfolk you control. Again, it seems more like a commander card than a standard card. Uh, in standard, you don't want to be tapping three untapped Merfolk to draw a card. You don't want to be tapping five to put plus one plus one counters on everything. Um, you want to play faster than that. You want stuff that just comes in and does stuff straight away. Uh, I mean, the tapping another Merfolk is fairly good to make it unblockable, especially if you load up all your counters on it, but pretty sure there's, there's better ways of doing it. But still, nice card. Another Hornswoggle, Oathsworn Vampire. Thunderhead, Migration, and Profane Procession. Love this card, so good. Uh, flip card, uh, Legendary Enchantment, and it is uh, white, black, and one. And you can pay three and a white and a black to exile target creature. Then if there are three or more cards exiled with Profane Profession, transform it. And then it turns into a Legendary Land, where you can use it to add mana, or just start playing the creatures that you stole. Um, yeah. Such a good card in Limited. Um, you can get some really crazy combos off with it as well. So it's just a lot of fun. I'm sure some of the find a use for it in, uh, in standard as well. Especially because it's just a repeat exile effect. So it's not actually that slow because you can just keep doing it. Uh, Baffling End, Relentless Raptor, Needletooth Raptor, and Path of Metal, another flip uh, enchantment that turns into a land. So red, white, uh, when it enters the battlefield, deal one damage to each, cre each creature that doesn't have first strike, double strike, vigilance, or haste. And whenever you attack with at least two creatures that have any of those keywords, transform it. And it transforms into add a mana of any color to your pool, and red and one, tap it uh, to deal two damage to each opponent, or a white and two, tap it, uh, choose a creature at random that attack this turn and destroy that creature. Uh, probably the least good of all the flips, but it is very cheap, so it, it'll probably find its way somewhere into a deck. Um, I, I don't think it's bad, I just don't think its effect is as powerful as the others. Strength of the Pack, Silvergill Adept, Stormfleet Sprinter, and Admiral's Order. So three mana, uh, instant with raid. If you attack with the creature this turn, you can pay one blue rather than this spell's mana cost and counter target spell. So useful if you go to the attack step and um, swing in with some of your pirates or whatever, and your opponent tries a combat trick or tries to I don't know, just kill off one of your dudes or something. You can just respond with uh, with a counter spell for one. Otherwise, it's just a counter spell for three, which isn't actually that bad because those exist already. So it's like a standard counter spell with upside. Gone too far again. Uh, Everdon Champion, Foul Orchard, Riverwise Augur. And release to the wind, so three mana instant exile target non land permanent for as long as um, that card remains exiled. Its owner may cast it without paying its mana cost. Interesting one. And a foil planet, nice. Getting towards the end of the box. I think it's the foils that mess me up every time there's a foil in the pack. There's one less common. Uh, Slippery Scoundrel, Highland Lake, and a Paladin of Atonement. Two mana, one, one. Uh, Vampire Knight at the beginning of each upkeep. If you lost life last turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on Paladin of Atonement. 
When Paladin of Atonement dies, you gain life equal to its toughness. Um, yeah, not too bad. Might make its way into the vampire deck. Got Swamp and a foil. Stormfeet Sprinter, nice. As you can see her, I think I said it right that time. Baffling End, Cacaphodon, <laughs> nice. Uh, Tilanali's Summoner, so two mana, one, one with Ascend. Uh, when it attacks, you may pay X and red. If you do, create X, one, one, red elemental creature tokens that are tapped and attacking. At the beginning of the next end step, exile those tokens, unless you have the city's blessing. So get a boatload of uh, elementals, and then if you have the more elementals you get, they count as permanents towards city's blessing as well. So the more permanent, like the more elementals you get, the more you get to keep them, kind of. Well, at least the faster you get to keep them. Um, could be actually really good. Uh, Everdawn Champion is our foil. Uh, Goblin Trailblazer. The Cherished Hatchling, Pride of Conquerors, Die Fleet Neckbreaker, and Warkite Marauder. Two mana, two one flyer, already good. Uh, whenever Warkite Marauder attacks, target creature defending. I'll start that again. Whenever Warkite Marauder attacks, target creature defending player controls loses all abilities and has base power and toughness at zero until end of turn. Um, this is actually, yeah, another one that people raved about. Uh, I actually think it's it is quite good as long as you have like the damage, like a relevant damage spell to kill off that creature. Um, as well as just turning it into a zero one, um, but yeah, good card. It is what I will say about that. I think there will be a deck built around it, and I think it will do well. But it also has potential to just be very, very overhyped, and therefore the price is already skyrocketed, and uh, it'll turn out that it's not actually that good. We'll see what happens. Uh, see red, four of Legion, Cacaphodon, and Elenda, the Dusk Rose. So four mana, one, one with Life Link, uh, legendary vampire knight. Whenever another creature dies, put plus one, plus one counter on Elenda. Uh, when she dies, create X, one, one, white vampire creature tokens with Life Link, where X is Elenda's power. Um, I think this, this could be really good in Commander. Uh, I think it might also see standard play. Uh, as like a one or two of, because there is a, a vampire deck that is sort of viable at the moment. So um, yeah, it, it's a very well designed card actually. And there's the vampire token to go with it. Last these last packs. I went one too far again. Silly foils. Um, Tomb Robber, three mana, one, one with Menace, and you discard a card and it explores. Um, I don't think there's, that it's going to be good necessarily, but I, I do like the flavor of the card. Um, I want to make it work, but discarding cards is, uh, you need to be drawing a lot of cards to be able to do that. Which I suppose it does in itself because uh, Explore can draw you cards if it's a land. Um, otherwise, you're just getting plus one, plus one. Anyway, Dive Fleet Netbreaker, Pirate's Pillage, Reaver Ambush, good removal spell. And Deep Root Elite, uh, two mana, one, one, Merfolk Warrior. Whenever another Merfolk enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one, plus one counter on target. target. <laughs> Target. Uh, target Merfolk you control. I think I put Merfolk and Target into the same uh, word there. So, two mana one one's pretty bad, but the ability is very good. Might make it into a Merfolk deck, but again, the two slot in the Merfolk deck is. Oh, there's so many good two drops. I mean, especially with Silver Galadic now as well. It's just. It's difficult to fit all these good cards in. 
And you don't want to play like ones and twos of, so you want to play full play sets for consistency. Uh, Flood of Recollection, Ravenous Chupacabra, Legion Lieutenant, and Dead Man's Chest. Two mana enchantment. Um, enchant creature and opponent controls. When it dies, exile cards equal to its power from the top of its owner's library. You may cast non-land cards from among them for as long as they remain exiled. And you may spend mana as a mana of any time to cast them. Um, yeah. Nice. Attach onto their 9-9. Nine -nine. <laughs> cast with their dinosaurs. Take the Foundations, Thunderhead of Migration, Pitiless Plunder, and World Shaper, another 4-drop Merfolk that won't possibly, that may possibly make it into the deck, but probably not. 4-mana, um, 3-3, three, three. when it attacks, you can put, you can mill 3 off your deck, and when it dies, pull land cards from your graveyard off the battlefield, tapped. Um, Dora right effect, I guess. I tried to make it work in Limited with... Um, the, the, the green black enchantment where you can bring stuff back from the graveyard as well and it didn't work <laughs> maybe I was just unlucky though enter the unknown imperial ceratops arterial flow and a bonus hunger three mana instant uh, with a send on it as well each opponent sacrifices a creature if you have the city's blessing instead each opponent sacrifices half the creatures he or she controls rounded up uh, this is definitely a commander card. Like, the, the, so good at commander. I mean, obviously they choose what they sacrifice, but they they still have to sacrifice stuff. So for three mana, and in commander you're almost always going to have City's Blessing <laughs> very, very early. Um, yeah, really good. And last pack. Let's see if we get anything exciting. Daring Buccaneer, Merfolk Mistbinder, that's fairly exciting. Forsaken Sanctuary, and Captain's Hook. So, a three mana uh, artifact, which is equipment, and the equipped creature gets plus two plus oh and has menace, and is a pirate. So, attaching a hook makes people a pirate, well, makes anything a pirate, so attach it to a dinosaur, uh, and it's a pirate. Attach it to uh, a servo, and it's a pirate. Um, when it becomes unattached from permanent, destroy that permanent. So yeah, pretty good. And a foil crashing tide to finish things off. So yeah, I mean, I think the set as a whole is um, pretty interesting. They've they've done the whole tribal thing again, which um, it makes limited fun for a while, and then it gets a bit boring because you're always making the same um, tribes and stuff. But there's definitely some, some awesome stuff for, uh, for Constructed. Like there, there's some, some very good power cards in this. Uh, I've lost like the War Kite Marauder, uh, Profane Profe Procession, potentially. Um, like Champion of Dust could be very, very good in a Vampire deck. Uh, Dive Fleet Poisoner. I think Daredevil. Yeah, I mean, yeah, some definitely good stuff. Um, Tetsamok. <laughs> uh, but again, like Ixalan, it, it seems a, a little bit like it's a uh, a commander oriented set. Uh, but I mean, we got some awesome stuff from the box anyway. Like the Kamena, like the Sakama, the Hoatli, the Phoenix. Um, some really good mythics in that uh, in those packs and again some of the, the rares were awesome and some of the uh, uncommons are actually really high value as well so always nice getting those ones but yeah uh, you can find all of these cards and the rest of uh, the Rivals of Ixlan set on our website bigorbitcards.co.uk um, please feel free to uh, comment on the video if you liked it um, and also like it and subscribe to our channel uh, for more videos like this. We'll be doing unboxings of all the other um, rivals bits and pieces like the Planeswalker decks and everything. But yeah, thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.